Mr Nevins here with a quick tutorial on the tune Scotland the Brave. Now this tune is a common mass bands piece. The setting that we are looking at today um, is, is a very repetitive setting. This is uh, the kind of commonest version of playing this tune. Uh, the score that you have there you'll notice that everything really works in two two bar phrases or yes two two bar phrases per line. So we have an A phrase for two bars then a B phrase for two bars return to the A phrase and then play your C finishing phrase, a classic trope in Scots Irish traditional music. Um, so if you look at the first line, uh, we're going to have our A phrase, our B phrase, second line, A phrase again, then the C phrase. If we jump to the third line, we're going to have a D phrase, which is really based on the second bar of the first line, then back to our B phrase and then we do A, B or A, C, sorry, for the last line. So the whole tune is going to be laid out in two bar phrases of a, B, A, C, that's first two lines, and then D, B, A, C, and that's the second two lines. Now that's the, the kind of melodic layout of the of the piece. Um, our structure for the whole thing is going to be 4-4. Four, four. There are four crotchets in every bar, four quarter notes, right? That's what the numbers mean. Top number is a quantity, bottom number is a note value, and this time it is a quarter note. So every bar has to go one and two and three and four and and if we scan through the tune now okay, we've got our basic structure down what rhythms have we got well we've got crotchets okay whole beat we've got dotted quavers which are three quarters of the beat we've got dotted semi quavers which are about three eighths of the beat um a semi quaver on its own which is a quarter of the beat and we've got a demi semi quaver which is a, a, an eighth of the beat Okay, so what's that? Six note values, crotchet, dotted quaver, dotted semi-quaver, quaver, demi-semi-quaver. Oh, and there's, there's quavers in there, so there's six, right? A quaver's worth half, half of a beat. There you go, right? So there are six note values in the whole piece. Okay, um, the rhythm of the first bar is the defining rhythm of the whole piece. The rhythm of that bar is going to be one, two, a three, and four, and. Okay. Whole beat, three quarters of the beat, quarter of the beat, half, 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 half. One, two, a three, and four, and. There you go. I, and that is the main rhythm of Scotland the Brave. If you can get your head around that, then that gives you the layout of the piece. Four beats in the bar, and that first bar, sorry, that first bar of the whole piece, that lays out our, our groundwork. So that's us got a structure, we've got our bass rhythmic ideas. Now we can look at pitch. So in the tune, we've got um, A's, C's, E's and high A's are the definitive four notes of this piece. We do have D's and F's passing through there as well. All right. All very A major sounding. Great. Fine. Decorations. Well, the only real sort of um, heavy decorations we have in there are tula movements. So just a quick recap of the tula movement. Um, a tula movement from any note but D would be... A G grace note to the melody note, in this case, low A. Down to low G, a D grace note, and then an E grace note back to the low A. Okay, so that's your basic movement. Just as an aside, if you were to play it from a D, you'd play a G grace note to the D, close the chanter to low G, raise and lower your left ring, right ring finger, and then raise and lower your left ring finger going to the low A. I'll just do that again. That's a high G grace note to D, down to low G, right ring finger up and down, left ring finger in an E shape and then close on the way. All right. So the one we're looking for in this piece should sound like. Okay, that's it. Bare bones. We're looking for something more like. Okay, now that would be very performative. You want to find yourself somewhere in there, hopefully in the beginning. So the only other kind of heavy bit of technique is a grip. Okay. And there's a lot of the same ideas, okay? So we're getting our standard grip, low G, D grace note, low G. Whatever note at the start, whatever note at the end, the only time that changes is again from a D, where you would replace the D grace note with a B grace note. Fine. Um, rhythmically, coming back to that for a second, as we scan along the tune, we've got, we're able to go, well, the first one, two, three bars are all pretty much the same. Fourth bar, there's a little four note group at the end of the bar. Beat four, bar four in line one and line three. E, D, C, B. Now there's a high G grace note on the E. 
and there's a high G grace note in the C in this version of the score. Those are there as markers. The first high G grace note to E, that tells you you're on beat four. The second grace note to C tells you you're halfway through beat four. And the high G grace note back to A to start beat five, or bar five, sorry. That tells you you're on beat one bar five. Okay, so those are kind of all the serious pieces. You know, if you've got the score in front of you, feel free to follow along. I'm going to play it once, nice and slow, and then I'm going to play it at a more performative tempo. Okay, so after two, this is a slower tempo. One, two. There you go. So if that's the first time you've heard the tune, fair enough. I hope that you can read on the score along with that recording and say, well, those two match up. That makes sense what I'm supposed to be doing there. But again, we can hear our four layers of, of music there. We've got a structure, four beats in the bar. Rhythm wise, well, we've got six note values um, to work with. So it's either a whole beat, three quarters of a beat, half a beat, three eighths of a beat or an eighth of a beat. That's sort of it, right? Um, and so we can kind of fraction it all out, you know. When in doubt, try to imagine the beat like it's a pie chart. How much of what pitch takes up how much of the beat? And that will help you to fill up those amounts of time. Okay, playing bagpipes is all about completing durations. So I'm going to play the tune one last time at a more performative tempo. Okay, so here we go again. One, two. <laughs> As always, feel free to rewind, pause, do whatever you need to do. And I hope this has been a, a bit of a help to you. Okay, I've been Mr. Evans and till the next lesson, all the best.